<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we're inside the mind of Bill Burr. I want to work the word heart into my special and spell it H A R T so you can sue me. I will sue the shit out of you. I know you will. I'll sue the shit out of you. For, I don't know what the word is called, so I'm going to call my lawyer and find out what I'm supposed yeah, to call say. Call him there. up. Yeah, I will call him up, and I bet he tells me I'm going to text it to you and let you know why you'll be sued. Well, you're so huge at this point, Kev, to be sued by you would actually help my career. Man, I get sued. Just to have Bill, my name in the same sentence. Do you know how much I get sued, Bill? Well, oh, you're an asshole, so you probably deserve it. I don't, don't, come at me I don't even know half the lawsuits. I don't even know what they are. They just come. I get sued so much. I, I get sued, you get sued so sued much. by the white people in your neighborhood because your Lamborghini's too loud when you come down the street? First of all, I don't, I don't know if there's Look white up. people in my neighborhood because I don't talk to Look my at neighbors. Look fancy car thinking he's somebody in our yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk to none of them. I've never talked to a neighbor. I swear to God, I've never had a conversation with a neighbor. You probably don't <laughs> like your 47 Mercedes vans <laughs> out in front of your house. That's, Dude, I, I pulled know. up to your house. I thought there was some shine there from fucking... <laughs> Fucking Saudi Arabia. I was like, is this an oil man's house? Is this a comic house? You had a caravan out in front of your house. It's my fucking stuff. I got stuff. You got stuff. Don't act like you don't have stuff. You spend your money on shit. It's just uh, different I do. shit. I do. You got Bill's got a kick. I, do. I just don't have anybody commission. I just don't commission an oil painting of myself. To hang over what the door for guests. What coming. do you? What do you? What's your guilty pleasure? What is Bill Burr spending money on? Uh, you know, on aviation and. Uh, That's and right. You fucking fly. Yeah. How, how often are you flying now? Uh, like two, three times a week. Are you serious? Yeah. What what plane are you flying? I'm going for my instrument rating. What what plane so are you I, flying? I passed the written test, and then you have two years. I fly a, a Cabri G2. It's a French helicopter. I used to fly Robinsons. And, um, you know, those Robinsons, they're great helicopters. But, you know, it's technology that's from a lot of technology and, and, and aviation is old because it takes so long and so much money to get it approved. So <clears throat> these guys in France bought the R-22 that I was flying, took it to France, took it apart, analyzed it, figured out all its weak points, and then redesigned a helicopter. This thing is a work of art. It's a, it's basically a baby A-star. It's like a two-seater A-star. A-star is like what the cops and um, and uh, news people fly. It's the same type of thing. How does Bill Burr get into flying? How did that happen? Uh, Bill Burr was into conspiracy theory. Okay. Bill Burr speaking in the third person now. Yeah. Um, I got into conspiracy theory and I was reading about how the world's money is just sort of a giant Ponzi scheme. You know, like you and I, if we if we start a Ponzi scheme, we're going to jail. Yeah, yeah. But if you're part of the the Ponzi scheme, it's just like, no, fuck you. Fuck you, we're too big to fail and all that. So I started getting paranoid that I lived in this city. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, this is true. I love it, go ahead. So I started getting paranoid that I'm living in this city that technically shouldn't exist because we stole the water. It's a fucking <laughs> desert. And it naturally, naturally, Kevin, before global warming catches on fire for two weeks every year, that is now up to about six weeks. And I'm like, I can't even get out of this fucking city. Even when everything's working and the dollar hasn't collapsed, it still takes me forever. Can you imagine if the shit hit the fan? How the fuck do I get out of here? Up and out. So you planned an escape. So you I'm said, I'm going, yep. I'm going to learn how to fly a fucking helicopter. I'm going to go up and I'm going to get out. So when, so when it hit, you just said, fuck it, I'm doing this. Did you tell your wife? Like, did you, did you have to explain? I to took wife? a couple of lessons just because uh, I wanted to see if I was into it. And I immediately loved it. I'm, I am a closet gearhead. Okay. I don't, you know, I'm not good at fixing shit, but I will watch anything on the internet, somebody fixing something from a vacuum cleaner to one of my favorite cars to somebody doing a rebuild on a helicopter. I think, what those people do is amazing. Fascinating. Fascinating. And yeah. also, especially like in aviation cars and all that stuff, you got people's lives in your lives in your hands. So um, I got into that shit. So um, have you bought have you bought one or or attempted to buy one? Do you have any like planes or helicopters that you own? Uh, yeah, I, I own one. Good shit, Bill. Good I for you, man. Well, because I wanted to have a say, and it costs a fortune to rent them. It's actually cheaper in the long run to own one. So I recently bought one. And uh, what I absolutely love about it is, um, you know, if you have an engine failure, you, you do what's called an auto rotation. 
mm -hmm. which is now rather than the main rotor drawing the air into the disc, it's now the, the helicopter falling. The, it's the air rushing up underneath is what keeps it turning. So you have to fall at a certain speed to keep it turning because if you're going too slow and your RPMs drop, then you're gonna die. So on the R22 that I flew, <clears throat> I felt like the window was like this. This is the low RPM horn. Okay. This is over speeding it, which you wouldn't okay. give a shit if you did that in a real situation. I mean, it cost you some money, but like, but it was just, it was just, you really had to get precise. So I got those down. And now with this one that I have, it, the, the, it's like this. And I, I wow, feel like so it's a big difference coming down on a cloud. People don't understand. Like if, if you, if you stay up on them, how safe they are, dude, you can literally be flying this way, see your spot, stop in the air, turn around, nose it over, get your speed back, come down, hit your flare, and then level out. And what I like is you can bleed off all your forward airspeed, which is huge to me because I feel like, because this is what people don't understand, is, is planes and helicopters, this is going to sound obvious, but you don't really think about it. They're not designed to hit anything. So Helicopters. Helicopters. Or planes, yeah. It's, yeah. There's no crumple zones or airbags. Like yeah. It's all about weight and balance. They, it's designed to get up and fly. Yeah. So that's why you'll see these guys will get it on the ground and then, you know, they get hurt really bad. It's like uh, back in the day, like cars in like the 1950s and shit, there was no crumple zones and you'd hit something in the steering wheel. Everything came back. It just, just came inside. Yeah. yeah. You squirted out the side like toothpaste. So now they got it worked out. The engine drops down. They somehow with the physics, it goes around you like the level of shit that you can hit in a car and still be pretty okay is incredible compared to uh, back in the day. But aviation is still like that. You, ne you never forget that. So it's, it's, it's all about, you know, like bleeding, getting, getting that forward airspeed to just, I, I just love the fact that Bill Burr is in the aviation. I love the fact that your hobby is flying. And here's, here's the, the thing, Bill, the whole point behind this fucking podcast, I was having a conversation with some friends. And I said, you'll never meet people more interesting than comedians. I said, we're the most complex individuals alive. I'm serious. I've never had. You really think that? I don't know. Fuck yeah. Look at the look at the difference in the individuals that we know. We can call them crazy. We can call them smart. We can call them uh, people who have conspiracy theories. We can have strong political figures in comedy that are that are so adamant about one thing and not another. We have such a different level of personnel in our business and people only look at the personnel as if they're just funny but they're the most complex people walking the face of this earth some well, of them are I dark think, i think two some things are happy well two things that make i think people in show business fun to talk to is the level of travel you do and you can travel and be closed-minded and, and be boring as shit to talk to but if you have your you know your eyes open and you meet all these different people, there's a combination of that and the fact that if you came out of prison, mm. okay, there's like there's like two or three jobs that you could just go out and do, and they don't even ask what if you did anything. You could kill five people somehow in a technicality That's after 12 years in jail, get out of jail, go down to an open mic and get on stage. Yeah. And be yeah, like, ah, right, man, do comment. five minutes. Yeah. And then you're just up there. <laughs> and then when people found out you killed five people, Nine out of 10 comics would be like, yo, dude, you should talk about that yeah, on stage, you man. Should, that, you got to do a bit about that'd it. That'd be some prior shit. Yeah. You got you to gotta discuss it. Yeah. Yes. You can do that. I think you also can get into sales. Like you could kill five people, get out on a technicality, and then be selling Kias by the end of the week. You can, you get, well, no, probably not, not cars, because they're going to do a background check, but like Tupperware or like, you know, some some type of door-to-door -door sales you definitely could Your do. Salesmen are super in, really, like because because they have to read people um, the way, oh, dude, I, my brother was in sales, fucking amazing, one of the greatest salesmen I have ever seen. And his, he had a buddy of his, um, he had a thing like when he they were selling health insurance, when he would be selling health insurance, he goes, if I knew I wasn't getting the sale, he goes, I would just start staring at the guy's hairline. And just make the guy all fucking uncomfortable and shit. He'd be sitting there going, yeah, uh -huh. really? No, I understand it. I understand it. You know, uh, but maybe you can work out something and the guy would get all, you know, <laughs> touching his hair and shit. <laughs> <laughs>